Catastrophic accidents can happen anywhere, anytime, and always when you least expect them. And on July 22, 2004, Roberto Perez, a hardworking dad, was making his regular rounds delivering coffee in a Miami office building when catastrophe struck. A giant 10-foot, 250-pound door just fell off its hinges and landed smack dab on Roberto's head and back. Roberto lost consciousness and was rushed to the hospital. He suffered severe traumatic brain injuries and horrible pains in his neck and in his head. Buzzing in his right ear, dizziness, and radiating pain from his neck to his waist. He was nauseous and complained of problems with speech, memory, and problem solving. He was treated by numerous doctors, including a neurologist, a psychologist, a dentist, a psychiatrist, and family practitioners. But his major loss was his loss of ability to enjoy life. Roberto had changed drastically. He just shut down. Today, the Insider Exclusive presents the true and tragic story of Roberto Perez and how his lawyers Stuart Greenberg and Mark Stone, partners at the law firm of Greenberg and Stone, got justice for Roberto, earning them the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best plaintiff trial lawyers in Florida and in the nation. They have seen many innocent, hardworking people suffer needless injury through no fault of their own. Stuart and Mark are driven to help people who have been harmed by the negligent actions of others. Their goal, not only to get justice for Roberto Perez, but to make sure that those who injure innocent people are held responsible and much more accountable. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and this is the Insider Exclusive, live from Miami, Florida, at the law firm of Greenberg and Stone. my great pleasure to introduce Stuart Greenberg and Mark Stone to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. This is a case that we're going to discuss today, Roberto Perez. Tell us a little bit about what happened to Roberto. It's a really sad story. Um, Roberto is, as a result of what happened to him, one of the walking wounded. What happened to him, he was doing his job as a delivery man, delivering uh, products to a restaurant in a high-rise office building in downtown Miami in the summer of 2004. And through no fault of his own, they have a door or a set of doors that was about 10 feet high, each door weighing about 250 pounds, with the improper hinges on the door. And as he was standing there talking to the manager, a door fell off its hinges, hit him in the head, knocked him out, knocked out some teeth. And as a result of that, he had a closed head injury. And you've got to remember, back in 2004, Society wasn't as, a, as aware as they are today of post-concussive syndrome and closed head injuries because now we've studied more as a result of what's happened to the soldiers in Iraq and, right. and Afghanistan. So we really had to prove that this man had a closed head injury and as a resulting brain injury. Mm -hmm. And how did you do that? How did you go about doing that? Well, we uh, had him tested by neuropsychologists because not every brain injury shows up on a CAT scan or an X-ray or an MRI. Mm -hmm. And neuropsychological testing gets to go to the core of the brain and test a person's cognitive abilities. Plus the fact the family in this case gave us information and gave the doctors information about a change in Roberto's personality, mm -hmm. a change in his habits. And just talking to him, you could see that the light was out of his eyes. You could see that he was bewildered, he was confused. And this wasn't the person that everybody knew before this. So he changed dramatically. Yes, you did. We have um, a day in the life video clip of his sons talking about him and how that change happened and what he used to be like. So I'm going to go to that right now. When I found my father that same night after the accident, he was very down. He wasn't himself. He barely walked. We, you had to help him out of the car and to the, the sofa. He didn't talk. He didn't look at you straight in the eyes. Since that moment, he's not the, he's not the same. I can say basically, I mean, most of the people that, that know him, my friends and I. He's been turned inside out. One moment you're speaking with Roberto, and suddenly he has a blank gaze. About these closed head injuries, uh, we have some video of some of the doctors 
who actually diagnosed what went on with him. And I believe uh, one of them is Dr. Ken Fisher, who's a neurologist. And another doctor is Dr. Fernando Gonzalez, who is a psychiatrist. And I want to show the clip so we can make comments about them first. So let's go to Dr. Fisher right now. He has had consistent difficulty with his memory and cognition, getting forgetful, confused, disoriented. He can't put things together. He's been unable to work. His headaches have been extraordinary. He's a sh shadow of the person he was at this time before the accident. He had residual symptoms, including headaches, dizziness, loss of balance and equilibrium, and severe depression. These symptoms have persisted over the last several years. He'd be left with this, these to set of symptoms, the headaches, the confusion, the depression, reduced cognition, indefinitely. His future is having persistent symptoms requiring substantial help for the rest of his life. I believe that Mr. S feel very bad that his son is taking care of him. Sometimes he does resent that because he feels bad. He feels frustrated and guilty and, and ashamed. Uh, I have seen him for a, for a long time and I think he has a major depression. Single episode, severe, at times with psychotic features. The signs and symptoms that he is uh, displaying are consistent with uh, the traumatic brain injury and subsequent major depressive disorder. Now that we've listened to what they've said, um, does the other side, the folks that you're suing, do they have their own witnesses who have completely different analysis of Roberto Perez's uh, condition? Sure, Steve. You know, in every case, uh, the defendant's not just going to sit there and roll over. They're going to hire experts of their own, yeah. um, many of whom have long affiliations with the insurance companies who are representing yeah. these defendants. So we understand that it's a battle uh, all the way up to and through, including trial. Um, but, uh, you know, that's why when we take a case, uh, we want to vet the case, yeah. make sure that the doctors who are treating uh, our particular plaintiffs or our particular clients are also well credentialed. Yeah, you brought up an interesting point. They, the other side, gets doctors who have a long affiliation with insurance companies. Now, they're not employed by the insurance companies, are they? No, they're not. Can you bring up, because I remember the verdict, can you bring up a situation where a doctor has testified a thousand times for the same insurance company? Can you bring that out in court? Well, first of all, we're not allowed to talk about insurance in Florida. Okay. So. It's, the jury has to be smart enough to understand that these big companies have insurance coverage. But we could certainly talk about how many times the doctor has worked on behalf of defendants and how much money he has earned as a result of that in an annual you basis. You can bring that out in court. Oh, absolutely. Okay. To show, to show this doctor's prejudice and, his, and the direction in which he testifies. Do some doctors make a significant amount of money per year and what would that amount of money there be? There are doctors in this community that make between 500 and a million, 500,000 and a testify. million dollars a year just testify. Never putting the white coat on. Well, they put the white coat on, <laughs> but they never treat the patient. They don't operate on the patient. They don't prescribe medication. So they make it a million dollars a year. So, some do, yes. Steve, wow. there, there are doctors in this community and in Florida who make upwards of 95% of their income is derived from doing medical legal evaluations on behalf of defendants and insurance companies. Yeah, we are going to show a clip right now of who Roberto Perez was, the personality that he was. We're also going to show how those roles have been reversed. I want to show the, the, the contrast here. Roberto was a happy, fun-loving, active person who loved and cared for his family and was raising his son Adrian as a single parent. He was like a Mr. Mom. He was very special. He was very attentive to his son. He took care of his clothes, his meals. He took him to school and he would leave food prepared for him when he came home from school. He was an excellent father. When I was growing up, I looked up to him as a perfect father figure because he was always there to help me with my problems. He would always help me with my schoolwork. He would always support me. He would always be like, oh, you have to get good grades. Roberto was a very intelligent, well-read individual whose talents gave him the ability to more than provide for his family. Roberto Perez isn't the only victim. 
His family and friends have also lost a great deal. He was a complete package. He was active, he was joyful, he was youthful, he was happy. He told jokes, he was mischievous, he made the coffee, he cooked dinner. In other words, he was a complete person. Now, the parent-child role has been reversed. He became very bitter and bored. He felt useless. He was always dizzy. It really affected our physical relationship and that made him feel worse. Each day he does less and less, he talks to less and less people. Uh, he closes himself up more. Sometimes he doesn't talk to me even for 15 or 30 days. This is hard. It's as if I'm looking at another person. That person that I know and shared many good times with, I'm sorry. This case was settled, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Okay. What was your legal strategy up until the time you settled it to win this case? Our strategy was very simple. We were trying to prove fault on all the people that we sued and yeah. trying to prove how injured our client was. It was clear-cut evidence the door fell on his head through no fault of his own. But understand that we had to sue various people and they all pointed the finger and went like this and then they argued that he wasn't as hurt as bad as we claimed he was right. and they had a right to have him examined and things of that nature. And that's typical in cases like that, isn't it? Yes, it is. Even though it's clearly, you know, uh, there's clear proof that the other side actually did the deed. Correct. They are going to try to weasel out of any responsibility, right? Sure, Steve. You know, our experience is that it, it, when you, when you sue one company for something that seems pretty obvious, the first thing they're going to do is look to point the finger at someone else. Yeah, and, uh, and then that's part of what we have to do. We fortunately have Roberto with us today, and so we're going to bring him on with his interpreter. So let's do that right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Roberto Perez and his translator, Vicente de la Vega. Welcome to the show. Gracias. Thank you. Take us back to that day you were delivering coffee, I think, uh, in a high-rise here in Miami, and uh, all of a sudden the door landed on your head. What do you remember after that? I don't remember the exact details because everything happened quite fast. That day was like a stop in my life, like everything stopped, and I suffered a change. It was a metamorphosis. Do you sometimes try to be your old self as you knew yourself before rather than let's say living with this situation what do you do to try to help yourself um, after having lost uh, uh, I used to have a relationship and uh, we were going to get married but all of that uh, went to the dumps Financially, I had to sell my apartment in order to be able to survive, and after that money ran out, I was practically living as a homeless. Mm -hmm. You live with your son now? Yes, uh, always, uh, since uh, for the last 13 years, since my wife passed away, I've been in charge of him, and I've been in charge of him for the last 13 years now. What is your life like today? What, is, what, what do you do every day? I now lead a quiet life, but after having suffered and gone through that change, I am no longer the same person I used to be before. Right. But I now have a safety net, things that allow me to go on, even though my life has changed in that regard. I feel more relaxed. I feel I am more capable now to face the challenges of the future. As a result of your case, which was successfully won by your attorneys, Stuart Greenberg and Mark Stone, what's your opinion of this law firm? At the beginning, I really didn't have that much trust, but then I realized that as time went by, they behaved not only as a law firm, but mainly as part of my family. Well, that's the way everybody wants their lawyers to be, and thank God you had them representing you. 
presentado. Yeah, o sea, o sea fue, una, fue una suerte para mí haber... Eh, I was fortunate to find this law firm and they have professionally performed with me and I will be forever thankful to them. I want to thank you for coming on the show, Roberto, and our best to you. Okay, muchas gracias. Thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to introduce Adrian Perez. Welcome to the show, Adrian. Thank you. Um, you have lived over the last seven years through this whole transformation of your dad. Um, we showed earlier a clip where you were talking about what your dad used to be like, you know, very fun-loving, active, and that sort of thing. And then, as a result of the injury, changed dramatically. Tell us your feelings as you went through this evolution from when it happened all the way to today. How has that change happened for you? Well, my father used to be the kind of father, you know, that every child had, you know, a father that would like to do things with their son, mm -hmm. like any other father. Now he's more of a, he doesn't have enough energy. He gets tired very easily. He usually, we would be watching a movie or, or doing anything. He would just fall asleep or not remember, you know, he left this door open or he left that, that light on or he just falls asleep all over the place, basically. It's yeah. Has he gotten better or stayed the same over the years? He's gotten a little bit better in the sense that he's not in pain as much as he was right. at the beginning, but it's still the same attitude as in he's still in the same stage where he doesn't have enough energy. He's not motivated to do anything. He just lays around, sitting down. Yeah. Now, you live with him now. Yes. You are the only one that lives with him now. Yes. And so you go to college now, right? Yes. What does your dad do during the day when you're in college? Um, I would imagine he does the same thing that he does when I'm there, which would just be sitting on the couch, watching TV or sleeping. But he can like take care of himself and yes. that sort of thing. Does he go out much? No. Not at all? No. You try to encourage him to go out? I try to encourage him to do stuff with me, go you know, to the movies or to the market or anywhere just to go outside the house, just to motivate him to... Yeah. Does, does he go to a psychologist or psychiatrist or a therapist or something like that to try and, let's say, get him out of his depression? Unfortunately, cognitive rehabilitation has done everything it can for him. Really? He's plateaued. He's as good as he's going to get. Mm -hmm. But for the love of his family, and yeah. especially Adrian, he would not be where he is today. So you're almost kind of a caretaker for him. He's been that way ever since the day of the accident. As a, as a teenager, he had to take care of his dad. And you were like 14 years old. Yes. You have another brother. How much older is he? He is 34. Where does he live? He lives here In with Miami. his, yes, with his life, with his wife and kids. Yeah. So he doesn't really have the time, you know, to take care of him like I do. Yeah. What has been your uh, opinion of this whole experience? Uh, well, honestly, it's been a dramatic experience, you know, for the whole family, especially for me, yeah. not being able to do what regular teenagers would do. Unlike when my friends, for example, would be going out to the movies or hanging out, I would have to be home taking care of my father, which wasn't a bad thing. It was just... What about now as you're getting older? Well, now, for example, he, he could take care of himself. Yeah. But, you know, even when I go to college or I go to job interview, I always have that thought in my mind, you know, if, am I doing the right thing by, you know, trying to progress in life while leaving my father at home when he took care of me when I was growing up? Well, you've been doing a really courageous thing, you know, by taking, and it's, it's, a, it's a huge responsibility. Thank you very much for being on the program. I had just one last question. Obviously, you have come to know uh, Stuart and his law firm very well. What is your opinion of them as lawyers and as friends? My opinion is, honestly, 100%. My father couldn't contract better people. They're the best lawyers I know. They're not only professional, they're, they're personal. They're, they're your lawyers, but your friends at the same time. Yeah. The best people you can possibly ever meet. Well, thank you very much for being on the program. Thank you.
when you look at a case like this where you really don't see any external physical damage, these are tougher cases to handle, aren't they? Yeah, they definitely are. But yeah. uh, as Stuart alluded to earlier, um, MRIs have limitations, CAT yeah. scans have limitations. In brain injury cases, you've got microtrauma that may not appear on a scan, so you have to go maybe the next step or two or three steps further and, yeah. uh, and have a neuropsychological exam evaluated. Yeah, and this is unfortunately a permanent situation. Um, sad. It's very sad. Um, because when you look at what Roberto was before and what he is today, it's, it's almost going from your best friend to being a burden. Yeah, and, and it's hard for a juror to understand it. It's easier, God forbid, if somebody were paralyzed or came into a courtroom yeah. in a wheelchair or missing a limb, they could see it. Yeah. He looks normal. And it's not until you get to spend time with him and understand him and talk to him do you begin to realize that something's off. Well, you did a great job for Roberto. You've done a great job for a lot of your clients, and we certainly thank you for spending time with us today. Thank, thank you. you, Steve. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.